Here's a trick I'm gonna teach you on how to get better looking TIG welding passes. You're probably thinking that this is gonna be something to do with the trick with the torch hand, but this is actually a trick I'm gonna teach you to do with your filler rod hand. And as a matter of fact, most people who are watching right now would probably say that manipulating the filler material is one of the hardest things to learn how to do when you get going with TIG welding. So check this out right here, watch this. Let me know in the comments below if this is familiar to you. And again, no shame in admitting this, I was the same. When you get set up to start welding, everything is going fine at first, you're comfortable, you've got enough filler rod material going into the puddle, and then you start to feel a little bit of fatigue in your feeding hand. You start to struggle to feed out as you're running out of filler material in your hand, even though you may have an entire rod of it on the other side of your hand. Your hand begins to tremble and fumble, and before you know it, things are starting to get in your way and you can't see clearly. Now, like I said, this is something that is very common for a lot of people when they first get going with TIG welding. Don't sweat it. Like I just talked about, the overall awkwardness of knowing how to hold this and how to comfortably feed it is definitely tricky to learn at first. And then not to mention, as you start to get uncomfortable with your feeding hand, you're fumbling with it, it can actually make things with your torch hand start to get shaky as well. You can have problems seeing your work clearly and then before you know it, dip. So here's what I'm gonna show you on how to feed the filler material properly. And for gosh sakes, make sure you actually practice this. Now, when so many people get set up to do a TIG welding pass, they're gonna put the time and effort into learning how to properly travel and manipulate the torch hand. And like I talked about, so many people ignore the filler rod hand. Seriously, watch this here. It's gonna take about five seconds for you to do. And if you do this before every weld that you do when you're learning, it's gonna make a huge difference. So what I want you to do here is get set up so that the beginning of the pass is nice and comfortable as if you would start any other pass. You're gonna get your body and your posture set up exactly how you would if you're going to do the actual welding pass. And then you can see I have my filler material hand positioned approximately like six inches away from the end of the weld or the end of the plate. Now, this is something that you can see me doing right here that everybody's familiar with. This is called a dry pass or a dry run. It's just a practice kind of run before you get going with everything, making sure that your torch hand can move properly. But what I want you to do is this, get set up just like I talked about so you're nice and comfy at the beginning, but instead of advancing the torch like you're doing a dry pass, I want you to advance your filler material keeping your hand stationary like we talked about, approximately six inches away. See how I'm just feeding out like this? Now if you want, you can even do a little tap tap against your cup just to keep you anchored. And at this point, what you're gonna start doing is the dry passes like we just talked about. You're gonna start advancing your torch and what it's gonna do is start to force you to back the filler material up in your hand as you are traveling along your dry pass or your dry run. Now here's the trick, as your torch moves along, it's gonna force you to start feeding your filler material back in, but what you wanna make sure is you don't move this filler material hand. So for example, as I'm starting to travel back, we don't wanna back up our hand like that. We wanna stay anchored just where we are, and as we are traveling, it's gonna force us to start feeding backwards like this. You can go as slow, you can go as fast as you wanna do when you're first learning this. So basically, it's just gonna force you to feed in reverse. And then when we get to the end of the pass like I am here, guess what? We're just gonna start feeding the filler material back out. So the filler material is now chasing the torch. And again, go as slow as you want, don't rush this. Now, like we talked about, advancing and doing dry passes with your torch hand is extremely comfortable for a lot of people for some reason. There's not really any problem when you got your hood up and you're just chilling, getting ready and practicing a couple passes. But like we talked about, feeding the filler material is notoriously difficult for a lot of people to do. Let's use the one thing that we are comfortable doing with our dry runs to actually help guide us with the one thing that we aren't so rock solid with yet. Like I talked about, we're just gonna be using this as a guide to help teach this hand how to feed, again, you can do it fast, it'll take like five seconds to do, or you can go as slow as you want. If you get set up for an actual pass and you just practice this out one path and then back before every single pass, you're gonna make a big improvement to the motion of feeding in and out with your hand in a really short amount of time. More time actively feeding and practicing this motion both ways with your filler material is gonna start to help build that muscle memory much quicker with your brain. And believe me, I know how all brains work. And this motion is gonna start to become autopilot. Seriously, with these days, uh, the, with the amount of welding that I've done, I don't even think of my filler material hand at all really anymore. My hand just kind of does it automatically and I just need to see what I wanna see as far as the amount of filler material that I'm using 
and my torch hand really does all the work and I can focus on this 100%. So this is exactly what I wanna teach you this exercise for so that you can start getting this understanding and comfort built for yourself much quicker. Now, like we talked about, there are angles that you do need to pay attention to. You never wanna feed your filler material from the side of the welding pass like this. You always want to be feeding in line with the direction of the pass. Download the free workbook in the description below. It goes over all this stuff, check it out. You can see here, you want to feed in line with the pass direction. You can see a couple other angles clearly laid out for you on these pages. Go get your workbook right now, it's free. And of course, we always wanna be feeding with the filler material roughly 90 degrees in relation to the torch angle that you're using. If you start to feed outside of these angles, you're gonna to start to see that your filler material is gonna break off and go into the puddle much more like kind of messy. And it's gonna be harder to get the smooth deposits of filler that we want. Make sure that you feed to the proper area of the puddle as well, very important. Do not feed to the center of the puddle like I've laid out here. This is gonna cause you to pull your torch back a bit, increasing your standoff distance, arc length, whatever, or dip your filler material right into the tungsten. Now, if you feed too closely to the leading edge of the puddle, the filler material is gonna break off really clumsily. It's gonna leave a mess. It's gonna be real ugly. Nobody wants this. This sucks. Feed right in between these two points here. This is what I talk about all the time. Right here is the sweet spot, halfway from the leading edge of the puddle to the center of the puddle right here. So hitting the sweet spot combined with proper filler angles like we talked about and practicing your feeding motion with your hand like we talked about a minute ago, you should be able to seriously upgrade the efficiency and comfort of your filler material hand so much faster. Again, like I talked about, this exercise that you can practice here takes like five seconds. Now what happens when you get comfortable with feeding the filler material like we talked about? You're feeding like a pro, you're absolutely killing it. Do we just say that we're good and stop learning? Heck no, there's way more that we can learn with the filler rod. The next thing I would recommend is for you to start learning how to feed around shapes. You may have seen me do this before, but I bend my filler material and it helps to feed around corners. You could do something like this around a piece a pipe with one band or a couple if you have a much bigger radius that you've got to go around. It gets my filler rod hand out of my face. I can run longer passes. I'm more comfortable. This works best when you're working around pipe like I just talked about. And after you get really comfortable with feeding efficiently and doing good passes on flat plate, try welding some fillets around a piece of pipe like this on a welding coupon. Then hey, Come here, I wanna tell you something else that's gonna help you level up big time. Take a look at this here. See how I'm holding the torch? This is a traditional torch grip that I sometimes refer to as an underhand grip. This is pretty common for what most people are used to when they start getting going. Now, if you wanna level up, like I just talked about, I recommend that you start doing something that I call the overhand grip. You're basically gonna flip your hand so that your hand is positioned over top of the welding area instead, and now the torch will be pointing down underneath. What you can do here is you can start to practice feeding from this angle. And I think that you're gonna find out when you start doing this, it's quite a bit different. You can probably relearn a lot of the joints like we talked about, uh, ones that you've probably already learned. Instead of doing it with a traditional or underhand grip, try to do it with an overhand grip. The fillet joint as well as the lap joint are two really good exercises to practice doing this with. As a matter of fact, on my channel before in a previous episode, I have done an exercise where you do half of the joint with a traditional or underhand grip, and then you do the other half in an overhand grip and compare the differences between the two grips. You can look and compare the differences between the two paths. It's really gonna help you to uh, work on your comfort and overall consistency with your torch hand, and like we're talking about here, the filler material hand too. This exercise is a fantastic way you can level up all things technique related in a hurry. And you can see we're basically just taking the things that we're already comfortable with, like our dry runs like we talked about, as well as just traditional grip that we might be used to, and then using them to help us get better at the things that we might be uncomfortable with. Again, go back to the first things that we talked about. Dry runs with your torch hand are generally very comfortable for most people. So we are going to cheat and use that to help out and use it as a guide with the filler rod hand and teach us how to work that hand better. Because like I talked about, everybody struggles with it. It's not a big deal. With these more advanced tips like bending your filler rod, working with an overhand grip as well, we again can take our comfort with the torch hand and use it to push and learn a little bit faster with the filler rod hand. Again, go download your TIG welding workbook. It's completely free. Enjoy it, I made it for you. Do a random act of kindness for a stranger today. 
Whoops. My name is Dusty James. Phil and Chill. We'll talk soon. Peace.